up guys, Paramoto here. How are you guys doing today? Today, I am doing fantastic. Today, I wanna do two things. I wanna give a story time about some of the worst dealership experience I've ever had. And two, we're on the hunt for a, kind of a large fish tank. I'm kind of a, a fish nerd. I like aquariums and stuff like that. And then I'm ready to step up to like a, like a 90 gallon. So I heard there's a 90 gallon at a local fish store. So I'm gonna go check it out and see if I can like maybe pay for it and then borrow a truck and go pick it up. give you guys a quick story time of, of some of my worst dealership experience I've ever had. We fall on the GPS so there'll be a little bit of freeway riding. Otherwise, it should be a good little ride. And I just lost my phone. And I just lost my phone. Great. Great! This might not be that bad. Actually. If I can do this quick, I could probably do this real quick. Bam, and we're back on. So anyway, like I said, I wanted to give you guys a, a rundown of story about one of the worst dealerships I've ever had. And that was with Team Power Sports here in Raleigh. So like you guys know, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm an Italian bike guy. I don't really mess around with Japanese dealerships or anything like that. And uh, I'll be honest with you, Team Power Sports in Raleigh has hands down the worst dealership experience when it comes down to sales that I've ever experienced. To be totally honest with you guys, I don't really deal with them all that much, but I've dealt with them twice, and I've dealt with the same sales guy. I think his name is like Corey or Chad or something like that. And like, he's he's like the worst salesperson I've ever dealt with. The first experience I've ever had with him, I wanted to go buy a DRZ 400. This was last year, right? First of all, he doesn't know anything about the motorcycles that he's selling at all. This guy was seriously sitting there trying to tell me that a DRZ 400 has a six-speed gearbox. It doesn't have a six-speed gearbox. It has a five-speed. It's always had a five-speed. You should probably know one of the main detractors of the bikes that you're selling. He doesn't. He doesn't know like the, the simplest little things about a bike that may turn off a buyer. He doesn't know it. And it's just like it's kind of it's kind of disgusting to be totally honest with you that the dude doesn't know anything about the bikes that he's selling. So I'm over at Team Power Sports one day, right? And I'm just looking. And I told the guy, I'm like, look, I don't have the money, you know, to buy this bike today, but I will probably next month. Well, I don't really have the cash on hand, but you know what? It's coming up soon. You know, I'm just looking. I'm just kicking tires. Don't waste your time on me. Try to talk somebody else into a bike, right? And he's like cool and whatnot, and he's like, oh, he's like, I can do the numbers for you. I'm like, okay, let's do the numbers then. And we get the numbers and stuff, and nothing changes. Like it's still like kind of a crappy deal and everything. Then they're talking to the guy, and he's just like, you know, like he doesn't say anything. Like he does the numbers, and I told him like, yeah, you know, nothing really changed. I'm still gonna have to wait till next month. I got a bunch of overtime that's supposed to be paying out soon, and you know what? There's no reason to really go forward today. Like, he didn't have anything to say about it. He just kind of sat there and just like was quiet and like stared off into a corner and he didn't talk and i was just like this guy's like weird like are you got you got like a touch of the special or something and he's just like sitting there like nothing like just staring and sitting and staring and sitting and staring and then i'm finally just like you know what bro i'm good i'm gonna go thank you for doing that for me right and like it's all like done like I i'm still gonna go and i'm still gonna talk to this guy in like a month when I have money, yo, I'm gonna do it. I get a call the next day. And like dealerships are pretty notorious, especially Harley dealerships are very notorious for like, you know, kind of like hounding you, right? So I'm sitting there and like, I get this call from this dude, right? Still like, the, nothing's changed. Like I'm still gonna have to wait a month to get money to like, you know, pay you, you know? <laughs> like there's nothing changed. Like if I don't have the money this day, I'm not gonna have it the next, right? And he just calls me, I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm still interested in the bike. I just don't have the money, like I told you. Like I gotta wait for overtime to come in. I was working a bunch of overtime, you know, at the rates that we get, and it's just like, it's hand over fist money making wise, to be honest with you. And it's just like, honestly, like, just give me a second, I'll get the money, and I'll come up and we'll talk again, right? And he just like silence on the phone, just silence. And he's like, well, if you're gonna have the money next month, I don't see why you don't have the money this month. I'm like, really? Did you just tell me that? Like, well, well, bro, most people get paid every two weeks, bro. And that means two paychecks and a bunch of overtime coming in. It makes a big difference, you know? And he just didn't get it. And he was just silent on the phone. And I'm just like, okay. After like 30 seconds of silence, I was like, okay, dude, uh, I'll talk to you later. You know? And I hung up on him. And that was it. 
Well, when I'm talking to him and I'm telling him, like, this whole whole shebang, like, it's going to be a minute. Like, it's just honestly, it's going to be a minute until I have the money. You know, and he just didn't understand it. He was just kind of, like, getting annoyed about it and everything. Like, you could tell in his, like, in his uh, tone of voice that he was just getting annoyed. I was like, I'm sorry I don't have four grand to blow on a bike right now. But he just kept on like just being awkward and being defensive about it. And I was just like, okay, whatever, shut up, go away. You know, a year goes by and I'm back at the same dealership with my girlfriend who's got a Ninja 300 that she's looking to sell. A Ninja 300, just to throw out some numbers, the fair trade-in value for a Ninja 300 was $2,800. And the private sale is like closer to like 35. Like it, it's pretty decent, right? And like this guy comes out and he's just like, you know what? This is the number that I can do. And he slides this piece of paper over to my girlfriend. He doesn't see me in the corner. I'm like sitting on a ZX-10, just kind of like poking at the plastic, you know, laughing about how creaky it is and how it's not a Ducati. I'm no, no offense or anything like that, but he slides this number over. He's like, this is what I can do for you. And my girlfriend's just sitting there like, huh, okay. And she just looks at me. I'm like, well, how much is it? And he, She's like, $2,200. I'm like, what? What, dude? You're trying to offer her $2,200? And I told him straight up, I'm like, bro, that's a shit deal. We're not just gonna give you the motorcycle. It's not happening. We're not just giving you this bike, right? And uh, he gets all like bent out of shape. And again, he just like turns off. He's a salesman that can't talk to people. And he just turns off and he just stares out in the corner. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? Like, you're a salesman, you, you have no people skills whatsoever. He sits there and he's just sitting and staring. And if you remember the movie, it's a Disney movie that that, that quote is coming from, please throw, throw a comment down below that you know what movie that's from because it's one of my favorites. I just like, I'm sitting there on my ZX-10, they're all over the table, all over in the corner. I'm like, bro, the fair trade-in is this, the retail is this, that bike has no mileage. It hasn't made it to its first service yet because she didn't like riding it. We're not just giving you the bike. Is that the best you could do? And he just stopped. He just stopped talking after I gave him all these numbers and whatnot. And I'm like, dude, that's a shit deal. Like, we're not just giving you the bike. You know, like, you know, I already, I repeated the numbers again. It's like, is that the best you could do on the bike? And he responds like, I can do this. He crosses out 2,200 and then that crosses out another number and he slides it back over to my girlfriend again. And it was like $2,400. I'm like, let me see that piece of paper. Just bring it over here. Let me see that piece of paper. And it's like, I'm looking down at what he's charging her. He's charging for like their own inspection and delivery fees to buy the bike. And then he's charging for the first service, the 600 mile service. I'm like, bro, what is this? Are you joking me right now? You're charging her for the first service and then also for your inspection fee? I'm like, first of all, that inspection fee is you. That's on you. That's your responsibility. I don't have, you know, if I sell it to a private seller, they're gonna look over the bike on their own. This isn't our fee, like we're not paying that. And then 600 mile service, which was like still like 300 miles off, right? I'm sitting there with this guy. I'm like, that's not even your service. That's not even your bill. Like that's whoever buys it. That's on them. That's not on you. Are you trying to charge her for somebody else's 600 mile service? That's ridiculous. And he just like sits there and stares and no rebuttal no rebuttal at all like he's got no people sp skills to speak of at all like and i'll sit there and i'll talk to a brick wall for like an hour like <laughs> like i don't care i'm good at talking to people i i enjoy it i honestly enjoy talking to people and i honestly enjoy hearing other people's thoughts and opinions on basically any matter right and he's got nothing he's got nothing to rebut anything and it's like if i was a salesman i'd be like oh well this or that or this or that or you know we're not taking a lot of things right now and and i would have a rebuttal this dude has got nothing he's got nothing at all to say you know and it's ridiculous like you're gonna say some ridiculous thing like you know four hundred dollars which what you're trying to like get off of the top fee of paying is servicing and stuff like that that's not even your bill like this is ridiculous this is absolutely ridiculous we're not doing this this isn't happening i'm like is that seriously the best that you can do and he doesn't say anything like what are you doing i'm like bro we're gonna need a minute to talk about this can you leave us alone and i'm sitting there with my girlfriend and i'm just like this is a shit deal i wouldn't sell this guy on sheer principle if he came back with three thousand dollars i would probably still tell him no just because he's an ass keep in mind this guy's like employees are literally like i don't know 20 feet away and i'm talking just like at this volume which is probably too loud right i just i don't care i don't care if you're gonna be an ass i don't care about your feelings at all you know <laughs> and this guy like he, he never comes back again and i just go up to one of the sales guys that are like the you know the underlings i guess i'm like bro can we get my key back like bro can we get our can we get our key back we're, we're bouncing and he's like well this deal is good for 
you know, 10 days from what we offer, like, we're not going to take this deal because we're not just going to give you this motorcycle. It's not happening. You know, and he's just like, he just looks down and he's just like, yeah, I know. Like, he knew it was a crap deal. He knew his boss is an ass. And he's just, like, dealing with it. I feel terrible for him because, like, at Team Power Sports in Raleigh, like, a lot of, like, actual, like, really good people that work there. Like, especially back when, like, Dodge Rider. Check out Dodge Rider's videos. He's on YouTube here, too. He's great. Like, he's a good dude. But you would go up to, you know, you could go up to Team Power Sports and talk to Dodge Ryder about motorcycles for an hour. And he wouldn't even try to sell you on anything. But it made you want to come back and give him money. And then Sev used to be the main guy who's, who this guy has got his job now. And it's just like, dude, where are your good people? Where are your good people at? Because this guy is terrible. I don't want to talk to him anymore. Like, at all. Not even a little bit. Literally the worst sales experience I've ever had trying to, to buy or sell a motorcycle has come from Team Power Sports in Raleigh. Just because their salesmen are garbage, man. Like, their lead sales dude, like, is garbage. They need to give, like, the responsibility to their, to their not manager people because, honestly, they do a way better job of being personable. All right, guys, I am where I want to be. Thank you for watching Vlog Thursday. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you like these kind of videos. I'm at it every Thursday. Next video is Topic Tuesday. I will see you guys there. Deuces.